What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a night nice sky edit in Lightroom. We're going to add a foreground element which I photographed separately. We're going to composite that in Photoshop. There's a lot. There's a lot that we can we can take from this particular video. We're going to we're going to cover a lot of different things. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday where each and every week each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new fresh Photography tutorial. Now this week we're diving into Lightroom. We're going to edit a nice sky photo, so stars, Milky Way, all that kind of fun stuff. And then we're going to do a little bit of a composite with Photoshop as well, where we add in a foreground elements, photograph separately. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. I photographed two photos. I'm going to show you exactly why I've done everything the way I've done it. Let's dive into it. So ultimately we've got this photo. And then we've got this photo here. Now we're going to use that foreground element but with the night sky from this photo. And you might be thinking, why have I done that? Why have I photographed two separate photos like that? Well, the main reason is that when you're doing a night sky photo like this, when you want to take a photo of the, the Milky Way and the stars, you want to be letting as much light as possible into your camera, so through your lens, which means you want the aperture to be as wide open, as big as it possibly can be. And in this case, that's f1.8 with the lens that I was using. And ultimately, that means that I'm using a relatively shallow depth of field, which means in this photo, I've focused on the sky and I've manually focused to do that, but it means the foreground is a little out of focus. And in this photo, I focus on the foreground and the sky is a little bit out of focus. So we want it all to be nice and sharp. So we're gonna merge those two photos together. Of course, it's actually also difficult because you, you wanna be using a different shutter speed as well. When you actually want as much light in as possible, you leave that shutter open as long as you can. And obviously there's there's different rules to how long you can leave it open before the stars start streaking in the sky. But when I was taking a photo here, I've used a shutter speed of 30 seconds to get as much light from the foreground as possible. And then from this photo, I've used 20 seconds, still getting as much light as I possibly can, but without those stars starting to streak across the sky as they move through the sky, or I suppose as the earth rotates is probably a more accurate way of describing that. So. We're gonna edit these photos in the same way. They need to be the same in terms of white balance and stuff like that so that they'll match. We can do some different things for the foreground to make it a little bit different, but ultimately we want them to match so we can actually put them together at the end in Photoshop. So let's dive into it. We're gonna start with this photo here. That's the easiest way and then we can copy those settings over. Now you can see this is a very warm photo. The, the tones are quite, quite warm. So I wanna bring that down into the cooler tones Let's bring it down to something like that. I think that looks quite, quite nice. Uh, I'm going to leave the tint alone and bring the contrast up. Let's bring the highlights. Let's bring the highlights down just a touch and the shadows down. Pump up the whites a little bit. Bring down the blacks. Texture up, clarity up. You know, some pretty basic sort of stuff. I'm going to bring the vibrance up. I'm not going to touch the dehaze at the moment. If I did bring it up, you know, it's going to really make that sky pop like that but I don't know if that's what I want just yet. So we might come back to that. Let's come down to the hue. Let's just bring the orange down a little bit to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit richer. Bring the yellow down as well. And then the blue I'm gonna bring into the kind of aqua scene just a touch. Come down here, let's enable the profile corrections. That's gonna help I think with the vignette as it did. Remove chromatic aberration. I don't think we've got any problems with that, but I'll take it anyway. Uh, I don't think it's gonna cause any problems. We're gonna leave the transform tab alone for now because I don't want to mess things up with the other photo as well. So we're going to leave that alone for now. Otherwise, normally I click auto, see what Lightroom does and go from there. Otherwise, let's come down to the calibration tab. I'm bringing the red primary, the hue into the kind of orange and the blue primary towards the teal, just because I, I like to do that, you know? Now we can play around with this white balance a little bit. If I brought it into the cooler tone some more, it's really going to affect that sky. I think I like it where it was. It's still quite warm. Maybe I will bring it down to the cooler tones a little bit. Something like something like that looks quite nice. And then of course we can look at the before and after of the photo as well. So we can press the backslash key here to see where we started. This was how the photo looked when we started. This is where we are right now. Let's press Y as well to see before and after next to each other like that. And I think that's pretty interesting. We've done quite a lot here. Now what I do want to do is accentuate this Milky Way that we've got here, the galaxy that is kind of intersecting through our photo there. I really like that. So I want to make sure that that's 
kind of emphasized a little bit. So I've come up here, I'm gonna click radial filter, double click effect there to reset everything. Let's draw a sort of long oval like that. Let's rotate it a little bit. Let's pop it down here. Let's click invert to make sure we're affecting everything inside the circle or oval. Bring the exposure up just a touch, just a touch. Bring that, bring the whites up a little bit. Let's make this a little bit warmer. So let's do something like this and bring that clarity up. I think that looks quite nice. Let's click done. Uh, so that immediately already brings out more of that galaxy there. We can bring a little bit more out of those. Let's go adjustment brush here. Again, let's double click effect just to make sure everything's set back to, back to zero essentially. Let's pop a little bit of warmth in there, a little bit of exposure, clarity, and maybe up the whites a little bit. And then let's bring this down in size. We can do that with the scroll wheel. I'm going to bring the flow down as well, which essentially means we are painting on with less opacity, kind of, and we can build it up by painting over things over and over again. And I'm just going to paint in some of these areas that I think look kind of good. And it's just a matter of trial and error a little bit where you, you want to paint in some, some parts and see how it looks and then you can go back and I think that looks pretty good. Let's click new, double click effect. Let's bring that down into the cooler tones, maybe a bit of magenta in there, bring the exposure up and let's paint in this middle part here, which I think looks quite nice. Paint in some of these areas. I might spend a bit more time on it, to be honest, if I was doing this properly, but for the purposes of the tutorial, I think this works really well. And you could go in and, and really mask out little bits and add exposure to areas. And I think bring it out even more if you wanted to, but I think this looks pretty good to be honest. I'm, I'm pretty happy with where we are right now. So what we want to do, let's right click on the photo down here. Let's come up here to develop settings, copy settings, and this allows us to copy as many or as few settings as we like. I've got everything ticked here except the transform tab. That's what I want actually. So I'm going to click copy. I'm going to come over to my other photo. So just over to here, right click, develop settings, and then paste settings. And that is going to paste the same settings onto there that we had on the other photo. So you can see there, I think that looks pretty good. However, because this was shot with a different exposure, 30 seconds instead of 20 seconds, it is inherently a brighter photo. And we don't mind about the sky. The sky is somewhat irrelevant, to be honest, in this particular photo, but we don't want our subjects here to be quite so overexposed. So I'm actually going to bring the highlights on this one down as far as I possibly can. And I might even bring the exposure down just a touch as well. I'm going to Reset the shadows so that they're not quite so, so low. Maybe even bring them up a touch. Reset the blacks and the whites as well. And I'm actually going to take the contrast down quite a lot. So I've double clicked there to reset it. I'm just going to bring it up to something like, something like 15, which I think looks pretty good. Let's do a before and after on this one. So on the left was before, on the right is the after. Now, I actually like the before shot on this as well, but we want this to match with the other photo. So this already looks quite nice, I think, just generally. But the sky is out of focus and that is a big deal. You know, we, we need we need that to be in focus as well, we need that to be nice and sharp. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have this photo selected. We're going to hold control or command on a Mac, left click on the other photo there as well, right click, come up to edit in, and then we want to open these as layers in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and click that. That's going to open up Photoshop for us now and open both of these photos as individual layers within Photoshop. And because we haven't done much with the cropping or anything like that, they should sit really nicely over the top of each other, which is exactly what we want them to do. So both photos have now opened as layers within Photoshop. You can see them here within the layers panel. And essentially we want the one with the foreground element to be on the top. So we actually need to bring that up. It's here at the bottom at the moment. Let's just left click, bring that up to the top. Absolutely no worries. And then we need to actually mask out the sky or rather mask in, I suppose, the foreground element. So I'm gonna do that. It's very, very easy to do this. I'm just gonna come down here with this layer selected. We're gonna click 
create layer mask or add layer mask. We've actually got a whole video on layer mask as well because they're super powerful. I use them all the time for all kinds of stuff. And that creates this layer mask, it's all white. Now with a layer mask, everything that is white is visible. So anything that is black is then not visible within the mask. So at the moment, this is entirely white, so we can see the whole photo, but I can invert that by pressing Control I with the layer mask selected here. So Control I makes it all black. Now, none of the photo is visible, but that means I can paint in what I want to be able to see from that layer. So let's come up here to the paintbrush. With white selected, let's press Alt and right click. We've got a nice sort of soft brush there. If we right click and hold like that, Alt and right click and move up and down with the mouse, we can adjust the hardness. I want a nice soft brush for now. We might want a hard brush at some point, but a nice soft brush should work pretty well, I think. We've got flow at 100% up here, which means everything's gonna come in at full strength. Let's start painting in this foreground. So we are literally gonna paint over this dark grass. And as you can see, it's the same in both photos. So that was very, very easy to do. We can hold Alt, right click and move the mouse left and right to make the actual brush size bigger or smaller. So let's make it a little bit smaller and paint in our subjects here. And we're literally just painting white over where they are to make them visible. Lovely. And I think I want to include the torch light in the photo as well. And that's just a case of masking that carefully. Now, of course, if you have a pen and a, and a tablet, a graphics tablet, it's probably even easier to be honest, because with a mouse, you know, you've got to be a little bit careful. I have not been careful enough, as it turns out, but that's fine. Now, when that's all done, all the masking is done, and again, I'd probably take a little bit longer, be a little bit more careful, but I think for the tutorial, this works fine, and to be honest, it looks absolutely fine. And when you're done with this, you can just press Control S, and this is what's great about the Adobe stuff, is it, it's all interlinked, you know, it's, it's, it's super handy, to be honest. It's gonna save that, you can just close it out, and then when we come back to Lightroom, the photo is just in there. So here we can see the photo is just in here now. We've got our subjects, Nice and sharp, nice and nice and well exposed. And then we've got the sky, nice and sharp. Everything's working really well. And that's essentially how I would edit a night sky anyway, bring out a little bit of the Milky Way, you know, and then add this foreground element in. I think night sky photos look fantastic. I, I love shots of the stars and the Milky Way and all that kind of stuff. But I do think generally speaking, they are stronger if there's a good foreground element or a landscape element or something like that. I think they I think they work better as photos like that. The first time I took a photo of the Milky Way, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. But ultimately, once you've done it a couple of times, you do realize that as a photo, it could do with, you know, a subject, a, a, another subject, something to kind of give the Milky Way something to hang over or something like that. So I think this works really well as a photo with the subjects in the front. I think it's also quite a nice kind of photo with these people here and the torchlight and all that, all that kind of stuff. It has a kind of Stranger Things kind of vibe to it, which I really like. Any questions about any of this, you can always pop it down in the comments. Of course, anything else you'd like to see as well, pop it down there as well. We have a new series as well, which goes out every Thursday about learning photography with Park. So if you actually want to learn things like manual photography, we're talking about RAW this week. There's loads of stuff. You can see that over on Thursdays. Of course, like I say, make sure to subscribe if you enjoy these videos because there's loads of stuff all the time. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.